Generally, they will either ask you if you want it or not necessarily give it to you. The next thing, oh, this is one I'm so wary to tell you, but it's, and the final thing that might shock you if you are an American visiting a European restaurant is, so today we're going to talk about how going to restaurants in America differs massively from going to restaurants in Europe, night and day. Well, not quite. Uh, there's a lot of similarities. You end up eating food in both of them, but there are a lot of very small, but also significant differences that if you've never visited one or the other, you might not know about. If you have done and you think I've missed something out, do let me know below in the comments. That's where we can learn and grow together as people. Not really, but you know, it's nice to chat. The first big difference will happen before you even get to the restaurant. Valet parking in American restaurants is a big thing. Valet parking in Europe, not so much a thing whatsoever. Now, don't get me wrong, if you go to a very, 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 very fancy schmancy place, you might get valet parking. There might even be a place somewhere in Europe, I'm quite sure, that has valet parking just for, just because they want to. That's their thing they want to do. But I don't think I've ever been to a restaurant with valet parking in Europe. In fact, most restaurants in Europe don't even have car parks dedicated to the restaurant itself. Of course, if you're in a mall and the restaurant's attached to that, you can park in their car park, but I'd say 80% of restaurants in Europe don't have car parks. That is a completely made up statistic, but just going with it, because 95% of statistics are completely made up. That's a fact. Boy, howdy. So before you even get into the restaurant, you're going to have to find yourself a car parking space. Tough on you. The next thing you will notice if you go to a European restaurant is that a lot of things you're expected to do yourself. They're a lot more self-serving than American restaurants. Speaking of self-serving, do subscribe to my channel. Do something for me today. Also, thumbs up because the algorithm likes that. I've noticed sometimes when I go to restaurants, an American family will just be standing at the door and you'll walk awkwardly past them. And this is because most places in Europe, you can just walk in and sit at a table. You don't have to wait for somebody to seat you. Unless of course there's a sign that says, please wait to be seated. And that's self-explanatory. So yep, you can go and sit down and make yourself comfy wherever you like, unless the table is reserved. And then there'll be a sign that says reserved. Reservado. When you sit down at your table, you might find yourself with a QR code. This is a question I have for you in comments. Is that a thing in America in place of hand menus? We got them in when COVID started and a lot of places have just opted to keep them. You just scan your little QR code with your phone and the menu pops right up. Speaking of menus, menus can come in European restaurants in a ton of different languages. So you can request a menu in English or Spanish or French. Not everywhere does this, but a lot of places do it, especially the cities. Now, you've been sitting there a while, nobody has come to take your order. That's okay, you can go right up to the bar and order in some places, that's what they expect. I would say most places a waiter or waitress will come and take your order, but some places you do just go up to the bar and order up there. You even go up at the end of the meal and pay your bill up there at the bar or at the till. Another thing you will notice is that your waiter or waitress will not be checking in with you a lot throughout your meal. This is something that honestly kind of drives me a little bit insane when I'm in America. The server, which is what they're called over there. I find that a funny word. But in America, your server will check in with you often. Hey guys, is everything okay? Speaking of your waiter or waitress, they might actually introduce themselves by name in America. That has never, ever happened to me in a European restaurant. I've oftentimes asked somebody their name, you know, a bit of banter goes on, you're having a little conversation, but nobody comes up and volunteers their name when you sit down at the table. They might even have a little name tag, but most places, no, not even that. Hello, I'm Marco. I'll be your waiter. Hello, I'm Homer. I'll be your customer. <laughs> Another thing that you won't find happening very often in European restaurants is them telling you the specials. Now, it does happen sometimes if they've got something specially special on, like a place goes, oh, today we're doing the grilled cheese sandwich. Why that thing? I don't know. They might tell you they have a special soup on or something like that, but not to the extent that they do in American restaurants. In American restaurants, they'll come up to you and they'll go, hi, today's specials are blah, 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 and I'm Jody, your server. Sometimes in European restaurants, your waiter or waitress won't even 
know what the specials are. That has happened to me a couple of times. I'll be like, what's your soup of the day? And they'll be like, I don't know, let me go check. The next thing about European restaurants is they are a place to go and take your time. If you're in a rush, you really need to let them know you're in a rush. In American restaurants, no sooner have I put my fork down than my meal is gone. European restaurants, they expect you to sit there and take time between each course. I could not remember the word there, course. And the way restaurants make their money is on the drink. So they want you to order lots of drinks. Remember, there are no free refills in European restaurants. So they make their money on the drinks and you can be charged anything as high as four or five euro for a soft drink. So you have two or three of those and it really adds up. Speaking of soft drinks, something that will really get your goat if you're an American going to a European restaurant is we do not automatically get ice. In fact, some places will ask you if you want ice in your drink or not. Others will just give it to you without ice. The reason for this is that people have funny feelings about tap water in certain areas. Some people think the tap water is good to drink, some people think not, sometimes that's by experience, some people get dodgy tummies after they drink the tap water. People are just funny about ice, so generally they will either ask you if you want it or not necessarily give it to you. There's no ice in this. Some places of course do give you ice, but not always. It's definitely not the go-to thing. When it comes to those machines in like fast food places, you can of course put ice in. Another thing you will notice on the menu is that you get the prices, which is, you know, same thing, America, Europe, but also that price is the price. There's no add on taxes. That's exactly how much you are going to pay for that item of food. So you can literally add up how much you're going to owe at the end of the meal. And speaking of that, you've probably heard this one. If you've ever watched any video on differences between different differences between Europe and America, tipping is not required in most places in Europe. Tipping is seen as an extra thing. You've done a really great job, thank you so much. For me, the way I look at the rule is if I go out for dinner, I'll leave a tip, but generally it's between 10 and 15%. So you've gone out for a meal, you've had a couple of courses, the waiter or waitress has been great, you'll leave a tip. And that's not me being scabby. <laughs> That's just what it is. In fact, sometimes in Europe, say you go somewhere and you sit down for lunch or whatever, you might just leave a couple of euro, a couple of coins with your coffee and your muffin if you feel so inclined. But the whole 20%, 25% thing, that's a generous, generous tip. It, it's done sometimes, I guess, uh, but that means like you've had a really spectacular time. Nobody will shun you if you don't tip in Europe a waiter or waitress and this is because they're paid the minimum wage. As I understand it in America waiters and waitresses can get as little as three dollars an hour which is obviously not enough to survive on so tipping is like a necessary you have to do it but that's just not the case in Europe. Restaurants pay their staff a wage. The next thing you might think is a little bit different in Europe is alcohol. With alcohol in Europe, in a restaurant, you can order at any time of day and you won't be looked at funny. If I ordered a cocktail at one o'clock in the afternoon in a restaurant in Spain, nobody's gonna care. If I ordered a glass of wine with my lunch in Dublin, nobody cares. And if there's a minor at the table and you order them a drink, nobody's gonna check on that. I'm not talking about five-year-olds here, but say you have like a 15-year-old or something and you order them a beer or a glass of wine, nobody's going to start questioning you. You are the adult, you're the responsible person. You can buy a minor a drink. They're under supervision, so you can do that. I think that's the law in most countries in Europe. There may possibly be one or two that differ in that way, but I'm not sure what they are. If you know of them, let me know below in comments. Courteous disclaimer, at this point in recording, the microphone kicked it. It just died, died a death. Um, so the audio sounds a little different now, but is still audible. This courteous note does not go out to Mark, who on the last video said, uh, can't hear this. The audio is horrible and echoey. Delete this and try again. Mark, you've been blocked. Um, enjoy your free content, but you can't comment now, so. I have heard that in places like France, they will even serve the children wine, but any French person I've talked to says that's just not really a thing. 
it doesn't happen. I'm beginning to think it might be, you know, a thing that happened way, way, way back in the day, but it just doesn't really happen anymore. The next thing is you will notice your serving sizes are a lot smaller in European restaurants. This is an infamous thing people talk about. When Europeans go to America, we're like, whoa, the serving sizes are huge. But here is the really curious thing. European food will fill you up a lot more than American food. This is something I've investigated a lot in other videos, and this is to do with what's put in the food. There are certain foods produced in America that are made bigger, like they make chicken look bigger than it is and stuff, which doesn't happen so much due to regulations in Europe. So your chicken might be this size in Europe and this size in America, but this will fill you up, whereas this doesn't. The next thing, oh, this is one I'm so wary to tell you, but it's important if you are coming to a European restaurant. Now you can do whatever you want, but the difference between somebody looking at you funny and not is this. You can customize your meal to an extent in a European restaurant, but not as much as you would in an American restaurant. In a European restaurant, if you say, oh, does that burger come without onions? Or can I get that without this? Could I have this instead of that. Okay, they might accommodate you if it's something they're making from fresh, but if it's a meal that they've already prepared in the kitchen, they're not gonna do that. You know, some of them bulk cook at the start of the day and then just kind of heat the items up. That happens globally. But in a lot of European restaurants, you can't do it to the extent that you would do it in an American restaurant. Like I've seen people change nine out of 10 of the ingredients in a meal in an American restaurant. And people are like, that's okay. That's just the standard thing that you do. I will cite you an example. I have always seen like those crazy Starbucks drinks go viral on the internet. Like they'll say, ask for this, 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 this. You can't really do that in even a European Starbucks. You can a little bit, but you can't be there like 12 different ingredients that aren't on the menu. They'll just be like, no, we don't do that here. The idea is that a restaurant makes a certain meal and that's what they do well. And if you don't like it, order something else. You'll eat it, you will like it, there is no choice. The next thing is to do with how you dispose of your meal. Now, if you're in a nice restaurant or something, of course, the waiter or waitress will come and take your meal away as would be the case in America. However, some places, depending on where you are, might leave the empty glasses around you and just let you have your other drinks and stuff. It depends on where you are. That doesn't happen as much because generally they try to be as efficient as possible, but it might happen. Now, if you are somewhere that is like fast food, something that might surprise you is that you will be expected to not leave your tray on the table. You have to go throw out the stuff yourself. This is something I've seen happen in England too. People like will go to McDonald's or Taco Bell and they'll just sit there and leave the tray on the table and walk out. European restaurants expect you to go and dispose of your tray table yourself. Not only that, but they also have a recycling bin. So you have to put your paper and your plastic in one place, your organic waste in another and your liquids in another. That is not the case in most nice restaurants, but it, it's a thing in fast food, like I said, cheaper places. And the final thing that might shock you if you are an American visiting a European restaurant is smoking. In recent years, smoking in public places in Europe has been restricted largely. There are a lot of countries in Europe where you are just not allowed to smoke in pubs or restaurants by law. However, some countries, depending on where you go in Europe, don't really care about the law especially when it comes to dining outdoors. A lot of restaurants in Europe will allow you to smoke if you're kind of discreet about it. But if somebody objects in the restaurant, then yeah, they're probably gonna make you put your cigarette away. In America, as I understand it, it is completely illegal to smoke in public places. Public. And also I've noticed just far fewer people actually smoke in America that I have seen. Smoking is still a cultural thing in some parts of Europe, though. It has come down a lot in the last couple of decades. 
People be vaping though. They be vaping a lot in Europe. We're gonna vape. We're gonna vape. So those are just a couple of things that differ when you're dining in a restaurant in Europe versus dining in a restaurant in America. You are most welcome to join the community at patreon.com slash Diane Jennings. That's it for today. See you guys on the other side. Bye. So today we're going to talk about how eating out in America is very different to eating out in Europe. Am I the, okay. oh no, I can't say that at the beginning of the video. It has root connotations. European restaurants, they expect you to sit there and take hours between meals. European restaurants, European restaurants, they expect you to sit there and take your time between the... Now, smoking has been outlawed in a lot of places in Europe, in public places. Let's try that sentence again. Now, smoking in recent years, as I understand it in America, it is completely outlawed. And actually, I just see far few people. What? What was that sentence? I get a lot of bloopers today. What happened there?